Hey guys, welcome to my shipping dock. See the door there. Anyway, time to make a video, a uh, kind of timely video, if you will. Okay, Mr. Ken Sheriff, I'm sorry I might be mispronouncing your last name, but uh, yeah, he's he, one of the guys that was part of the AGC team, uh, restoration team, and uh, he works at CHM and things like that, or he volunteers at CHM, and well, you've probably seen his blog, I mean, go look it up. Anyway, uh, very recently he did a blog post about terminal sizes, actually the rows and columns and why we have what we have 80 columns and all that and by 24 25 and you know not not really any any other not a whole lot of, of variation from from a standard and how that standard came to be some theories about that and of course ibm was well as as they were back then the 800 pound gorilla and they had a lot to do with it so in his blog post he touched on a little bit of the history of IBM terminals, starting with the uh, 2260 uh, and then a family, and then going on to the 3270 family. 3270 is maybe a little more well known today because, well, okay, it, it was uh, invented, if you will, or developed uh, right, right only about five miles away from here in Kingston, New York. And uh, early 70s, I think it finally got out the door. And uh, it was the basic terminal system for the System 370. And it lived for a very long time. I mean, there are still 3270s out there, although later models. And there's cert certainly a lot of, of uh, applications and code still, still uh, connected to 3270 uh, protocol and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, uh, right now I, I've got an awful lot of these 3270 terminals and right now I don't see one that I can show you, but you know what they look like. They're the, the white, the big white lumpy things. I think they look like mushrooms, kind of like puffball mushrooms. Uh, you know, kind of slightly misshapen. Um, anyway, there are plenty of plenty of pictures on the net of, of, of real 3277s and 3278s. Those are kind of semi-smart terminals. They're not a completely dumb terminal like a glass teletype. However, they don't have all their brains with them to, uh, to be able to talk to the mainframe. That's what this is for. This is a control unit. This is a 3272, and it is the first generation control unit for 3270s. Now, you know, they, 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 they developed 3270 for many, many years. It kept on evolving, and that under the tech scope there is a newer version. That's a 3174, 3274. I forget which one, but yeah, late 80s, early 90s, I think, uh, Way more complicated than this guy. But this is where it all started. Let's take a look at it. It's a boring, featureless gray box. Possibly the most boring bit of early 370s gear ever made. It's pebble gray, official pebble gray. It's about three feet tall. Let's look at the tag, because you got to look at the tag. Yep, control unit. And, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, and we see... Uh, Get that focus. Yep, came from Los Alamos. I dug this out of a very deep hole, the black hole in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, long gone. But yeah, this thing was so buried under stuff. Um, had I not done some very serious mining at the place, <laughs> I wouldn't have seen this. Uh, there's another property tag up there. I have not cleaned it. It still has tape from, uh, you know, Lot five, uh, you know, I guess that's from when <laughs> when uh, Los Alamos uh, auctioned it off. But that that's that's the panel. That's it. Power and on off, local mode on off. And why IBM has you to turn on? You flick that up and this one down for off. Why they couldn't use a center off switch is beyond me. But hey, that that's IBM for you. Um, the sides and back are completely features. There's nothing there. Absolutely nothing there. 
and the top is just a nice piece of uh, well, it's masonite uh, covered with a, a laminate or something like that or you know it's, it's good stuff um, you know just don't get it wet of course <laughs> but yeah like 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 a kitchen countertop sort of so I guess you could put your lunch there let's look inside I'm gonna put this over here so yeah this guy could control a number of 3270s focus there we go a number of 3270 terminals connected to the mainframe this is channel connected i believe uh there was a, another one i think a 3271 which was modem connected because if you had a branch a branch office that was miles tens of miles, hundreds of miles away, but you still wanted the guys there to connect to the mainframe while well, you used a modem. And so there was a, a local version, this guy here, and a remote version. And uh, this is the local version, which means you just connect it basically right up to the mainframe. So we'll take a quick look. Yep. Pretty boring as far as front panels. There's no front panel. In fact, there's not even much of a hidden panel. You know, IBM stuff of this era always seems to have hidden panels. And uh, that's the hidden panel there. It's uh, another power switch and the local remote switch. And fuses. whoop de doo But, uh, yep, typical construction for IBM. Let's look at the power supply. It's behind here. And, of course, being IBM, it's made for maintenance. So you can swing the power supply right down. There's a little safety latch there. I'm not going to go down all that far because if we go down too far, it kind of falls off. Um, it's a real pain if you don't have both hands uh, ready to go. But you can see there's the power supply. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty plain, you know, typical. Looks like they've got the whole um, uh, resonant transformer thing they love so much. Stick that back up there. You can see there are some screws missing. Yeah, they've probably been gone for 30 years. And this is the back plane. So let's open it up. Yeah, and I don't know what this little switch is for here. Something disabled. Online and off. And honestly, it looks like a kludge. Probably some upgrade. Anyway, swing out the gate. There's another tab. Pull down. Look at that. You can swing out the gate. Now it's going to kind of want to close, but you can see he can get to more stuff. And uh, you can see the uh, AC power cable there. And this is just, you can run it off an office uh, of the plug in the office. No three phase needed here. And if we look inside, let me get my flashlight here. You can see, there we go. Those are how the uh, terminals connect by uh, a single coax there. And below, there, that's the channel connection. Bus and tag, it looks like. Yep, yep, certainly does. Other than that, not much there. Now this one uh, looks like it could be expanded because um, we've got a, a back plane here which nothing is connected to. No cards are inserted. I think that is if you want to double the amount of uh, terminals this thing can control, which I think it was either 8 or 16 uh, extras. Anyway, this is the card cage here, and there's a, a loose card sitting on top. I don't know why, but it's got a little bit of SLT on that, and I got to wonder if that has something to do with the actual channel interface, because this is one of IBM's first products that actually, here, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Good old card F. One of the first IBM products where, there we go, they ditched most of the uh, custom ICs and went to mostly off the shelf. And this, I think, is just plain old 7400 TTL. It's all house numbered, of course. But uh, this has none of the, very few, probably just the few that I showed you, very few of those little aluminum cans with SLT or SLD or, or the various different technologies that they used. 
No, this this is basically TTL, and uh, it'd be nice if I can get my hands on some documentation. And I know where there is uh, an ALD set, and I hope I can talk them out of it uh, because they don't have <laughs> 3272. Um, uh, maybe I can get it scanned too. Who knows? Uh, no promises there, but uh, we'll see. Um, it'd be nice to get a cross reference of what these chips actually are, but I believe it is all just plain old TTL in disguise. We'll stick this card in later. If we close this back again, looking at the back plane, you can see there's, there's the coax there for the terminals, and it looks like this one can do eight terminals. And then if you look at the expansion down here, there's another coax ribbon cable which uh, seems to suggest eight more terminals. And huh, typical wire wrap here. One of these delicate cable tags here, which unfortunately, let's see if we can get this to, to focus here. Yeah, I can't read the date off of this. Uh, it's serial number 31,000 something. So I, I don't know if that's later <laughs> or late or mid range. I don't know, but I bet you IBM made a whole lot of these things. But, yeah, typical, typical wire wrap. Some tags. Let's open this up again. Inside, now one thing you'll see is this BNC kind of sticking out in the air here. I have no idea what that's about. Uh, it's, let me get my flashlight back here. If you look at this, that looks very kludgy. I don't know what's going on there. It seems that maybe they may have been having some grounding problems <laughs> uh, because there's a, it looks like 12 gauge wire, solid, solid green wire just kind of kludged in there. And you look at that, well, frankly, crappy solder joint up there. So I don't know what that's all about. Once again, if I get the documentation, I will find out. Anyway, well, that about covers it. There's a, uh, you know, there's this massive card cage that has the interface between the uh, the channel and the the mainframe's channel and the actual coax that runs out to the uh, to the thirty two seventy seven terminals and a power supply, and that's about it. I suppose at one point these things were everywhere, but uh, this is honestly the only one that I've seen. Um, I got to think there, there are more out there in collections. It's just, it's such a kind of boring, <laughs> boring piece that, you know, no one, I don't think anyone really wants to show it off. Anyway, let's uh, get back out here. There we go. Yep, makes a nice little, uh, about three foot tall desk. I suppose you could stick these things next to the desk uh, that normally came with a 370 and uh, have it all kind of meld together. A nice workspace. Anyway, I uh, hope you liked the video. Leave some comments if you want. Uh, maybe share this around. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I have to thank my Patreon uh, people, my patrons rather. I do have a Patreon account. I'll leave a link where, hey, a dollar is, is, makes me happy. Two dollars makes me twice as happy, of course. Uh, let's see what else. Hey, if you got something to say, leave a comment. I do check comments, um, for, for a while and the older videos I may or may not get, get to them, but for new videos, yes, I try and, and, and answer comments and things like that of what I know of stuff. And, uh, yeah, like I said, go ahead and read Ken's, uh, uh, blog entry. It's very well done. Read his other blog entries as well, because they're also very well done where he goes over the, uh, the uh, little bit of the history of IBM terminals covering the second and third generations. Um, and, uh, Hey, I will get back to work now. I'm, of course, busy, 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 busy. So I haven't been able to get a whole lot of videos out, but I was moving some stuff around. And hey, this popped up and seemed very timely. All right. Talk to you guys later. 
Bye-bye.